Fantastic. Well, welcome to the September 28th Education Standards Committee meeting. And today we are going to speed through some things, knowing that several of the members on the committee are tied up. So Mr. Zhu, uh, first, thank you for putting together and, and convening this, this back to school event from the, uh, that the DCSBOE ho hosted over the weekend. And thank you to Lauren, our policy fellow for being with me in the literacy room and the education standards committee room. <clears throat> we uh, got a chance to talk with some, some parents about their, to answer their questions about the committee's work and, and what's going on. One thing I will highlight on record that I find really interesting that I would like to keep exploring in this committee is that uh, I learned that BASIS has a college uh, counselor to student ratio of 21 to one. So every 21 students has a full-time college counselor, which I find really interesting in terms of the amount of support that can provide students and, and what we could learn there and, and how much of that is replicable in other schools, um, not just for the sake of getting into college, but for for having an, another adult right ask questions, support you through some of these, these bigger questions of why and how. Uh, Mr. Zhu is if Lauren is on the line and has anything else to to add for the debriefing of the back to school event, now would be a great time. Representative Chang, so Lauren is actually unable to join this evening, but she did um, share along some notes um, for the committee. And so I will um, pull those up and I can share those with everybody on the record. Um, you give me one second, please. Thank you. You're welcome. While you pull that up, I will move over to literacy. So I'm ready. Great, please. Oh, also, I think uh, Representative Wattenberg may have joined. Um, Super. Let's see here. Um, I'm going to make an assumption that it, this individual, and we'll hope that it is. Uh, it says Zoom user, so I'm hopeful that it's uh, Representative Wattenberg. Okay. <laughs> if not, I will quickly. Um, have them exit. Representative right. Watton. Yes, yeah. it, it is me. I don't know why it suddenly says Zoom user. This happened somewhere else. And anyway, I'm sorry I'm late. I couldn't get in. So anyway. hi, hi, Representative Wattenberg. Thank you for joining. Uh, Al, uh, Mr. Zhu is is just about to pull up some notes that Lauren made from the back to school event in the Ed Standards session. Yeah. So um, Lauren, our policy fellow, she shared that um, one, well, turnout was small during some of the sessions that she felt the conversations that were had were meaningful and engaging. Um, I know when I was walking around, I, I also would agree with that statement. Um, she said that conversations ranged from the impact of college counselors on college enrollment, which uh, Representative Chang, you just raised, to how DC governance structures works and everything in between. Um, she also noted that people were able to make connections with not just the state board, but also each other amongst the sessions and left feeling more informed and listened to, which I um, appreciate hearing. Um, she said another parent shared about how budget cuts at Hardy were impacting her child. And then she did end, Lauren did end in her notes to me, um, that there was strong support for providing the structured literacy training for educators to help all students learn to read. Um, and some of the attendees wondered why this is not already being done um, in the district. Great, thank you. Would you please let uh, Representative Parker in as a panelist? <clears throat> I will, yes. So with that, as a nice segue to literacy, I have a couple updates for you and then would uh, like Alec, uh, Mr. Zhu to share our uh, one pagers that, that Lauren has very, I, I think did a great job with putting together um, uh, for us to, to finalize and approve. Hey, Representative Parker. So uh, 
we had our NASB Early Literacy Working Group meeting uh, earlier this month. And uh, that was, again, very focused on structured literacy training for educators. Most states now have passed legislation to fund all reading instructors to receive the training, regardless of whether or not they've first collected data on who, how, where, when, right? With the assumption that, okay, we know it works. Let's let's make sure that any teacher who wants this training can get it. <clears throat> and so uh, just for me, raised the urgency again and, and question of why, uh, why what's in the way for us to actually actually get it done um, and and uh, you know they've they've they're seeing a lot of uh, these other states are seeing uh, a lot of great uh, in, impact from making those investments. Um, the conversation also brought up which which I think is important for us as as we dig into the details there of how um, <clears throat> uh, and and you know we'll we'll be leaning. Uh, heavily on this committee and our allies outside of this committee uh, next year who may have formerly been a part of this committee, <laughs> uh, Representative Parker, um, to think about ways in which we actually do this work right because uh, it's become very clear also that just doing the training alone is not a silver bullet. You do not see increased outcomes from that alone. It has to align with the curriculum and the school leadership um, really being able to activate what's what those educators have learned. And when you do, when you align all of those pieces, um, what we have seen in other states is that they are, the, the, the states that have scored on literacy outcomes way below DC in the past are, have now leapfrogged DC and um, are seeing just much better reading rates. <clears throat> um, one thing to for us to keep in mind, uh, we uh, we we had my my update from 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 Aussie had been that we're waiting for Chairman Mendelson to appoint someone for the committee, the task force that uh, we have been talking about this whole year. Excited for that to get started, and want folks to know that I I have a conversation scheduled with Councilmember Tran White's office who has been putting together plans for a literacy committee that they're proposing to council and want to make sure that I better understand what that uh, proposal is relative to how uh, Aussie's task force uh, is already tasked to think about this work. Um, I do not have any other answers uh, regarding the details of that at this point, but we'll report back. And uh, with that, would like to turn it back to Mr. Zhu to share uh, the, the versions of, of content that Lauren designed. Uh, yeah, sorry, Representative uh, Wattenberg. A couple of things. One, am I on? Yeah. If you have anything written that sort of shows this data of other, dis, other district states catching up with us, I would really love to see that. And likewise, if there's anything in writing that shows how we're the only place not providing every teacher this training. That second one sounds odd to me. So just curious about that. It's it's not that we're not providing the training. We are doing it in our way, right? We are doing it in a in a way that is relatively piecemeal and 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 slower to get started. And I think there there's like everything else, there is a trade-off, right? The 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 pro there is, you know, we are funding TNTP DC Reading Clinic letters. And it's my understanding, and this one, this one, I'm, I'm, I'm still digging more into of whether or not this goes beyond charters is uh, Orton Gillingham as well. Most other states have done funded one sweeping across the board. What that means is, you know, for us, it's more customizable to the particular school community, even, uh, and much more difficult to actually uh, then think about it at scale and in a way that aligns with curriculum and leadership training to 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 get this to every- Can I give you uh, one metaphor for this or analogy that you may want to use in something? You know how we're, our schools have such terrible repairs. I mean, it's just everything's falling apart and they DGS can't keep up with it. And I learned something that I probably knew but hadn't figured out is relevant to this, which is when DC invested all of that money into new schools, 
It was sort of like, go do your thing. And so you have all these schools built by different contractors with almost nothing standardized. So the ceiling tile that's used at Wilson is different than the ceiling tile, you know, that's used at Hyde, that's used at Leckie, et cetera, et cetera. Say, so, you know, everything that you can, windows, doors, floor tiles, blah, 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 you know, coverings for stairs. So we don't have like supply rooms or so, I mean, supply warehouses, you know, most districts this size, everything's in one place. Okay, I need some blinds and the blinds come. We don't have that because everything is so different. And it was, you know, everybody loved oh, all these beautiful schools, but now we're really paying for it. And we're not paying for it with dollars, we're paying for it in broken schools. And I just think that's a great metaphor for this idea that we have all these different programs. I mean, it means principals aren't gonna know what's going on. You're not gonna be able to scale the, um, you know, the um, the improvements to it because nothing works well right, you know, the first time. It's just gonna be really difficult. My, my biggest concern there is this alignment with all the other pieces, right? With with the curriculum, with the training, with, with what le leadership understands and with assessments. And and um, and then the other piece there, uh, Representative Wattenberg, is the scale. Most other states, when I say have provided this to every reading instructor, that is that is the key word. It's every reading instructor. We are providing it hundreds of teachers at a time, which is which is just a very different way to get this done. So with that, um, if if we may turn to the links that uh, Mr. Zhu just put in the chat. Here are two ways that we have formatted a non-comprehensive but introductory guide to resources, literacy resources in the city. And, and uh, uh, the, the top part really is a summary of Aussie's comprehensive literacy plan <clears throat> in the longer one. And in the second one, you see it's much more designed and perhaps a little easier to to read through for folks um uh and, but you know less com less less text more images on just you know ideas for where to turn to for help um and where to turn to for programs So, uh, Mr. Zhu, is the, is the right question to ask, which one do folks think will be more effective for us to share out first? So, yeah, I think there is a question around efficacy and the advocacy piece of this work. Um, I will say that if we look at the version that's a little bit more designed, and I am um, happy to actually just screen share that right now because it might be easier um let's see here just ignore my very messy um, computer right now um so you know we have a version that's a little bit more designed this version one for dc family dc families and, uh, and then others for educators um i think the the thought was folks could use these versions that are a little bit more designed. And by using the QR code that appears in the bottom right corner, um, that would bring them to the versions that are a little bit more text heavy um, and that could live somewhere digitally. So I think there is a question around what is more effective when we think about the resource and getting something into the hands of families. Is it something that looks more text heavy like what you're seeing now on the screen, or is it something that um, might be a little bit more appealing, but doesn't have all of the links and all of the um, resources directly accessible? And I just want to frame this because I, uh, Representative Wattenberg, you brought this up last time. Who is the audience? The audience for me is families around this, right? Who, have been asking i i get a ton of emails asking questions of where I, where they can turn to and i would love a chance to be able to provide a a, a resource that we have now 
all looked at together and that is that is a little bit more thoughtful than uh whatever i put together an email response that day <clears throat> and also as a as a as a resource that we can also partner with our our educators uh to to provide their families when when uh when when they get those questions too because it is my understanding that these are these are questions that that reading instructors get as well um and so uh i i lean towards the 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 more designed version that you know you have the scan qr code that takes you to the longer one uh mr Zhu. so in a way i would love to see both as 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 resources that we could share um with one being the funnel and and the other being the if you want if this was interesting and you want to learn more here's how you see the the rest of these these resources would love to hear everyone else's take uh representative Bernstein. okay hi i hope it's not too loud um outside uh i also think that designed one the more designed one would be more efficient just because uh it's easier to take in and if you're looking for more resources you can find them um especially because a lot of the resources are links anyways um but i think it makes sense to also add like a bitly link because some people just don't know how to use qr codes so that's just more of like a technical thing um and then i do have one question um and i don't think this is like a change to this uh, literacy document, but just thinking about potentially something else in the future. Um, a lot of them seem self-explanatory, but they're actually not. So like phonemic awareness might be easy for families that speak English, but for families where English is their second language, phonics and English might be difficult. So I'm wondering if, and this is a completely separate thing, moving forward, we can think about other ways to share resources than at-home activities um, for families that are English second language. Great, thank you. Representative Parker. You are muted, sir. Yes, um, I would agree about the bit.ly link. I still am convinced that uh, the QRS codes, everyone can't quite work them. And I'm just not clear what the value of the design version is. Uh, and I actually think the most important information on there are the free resources that are highlighted, but that seems to be on the second page at the bottom. And I wonder if we could amplify that and uh, use uh, a bit.ly or a website link to like the more detailed information. I, you know, my my go to would give more information than not, but I just looking at this and skimming it, I'm not sure if families would need to know like the definitions um, or even, I, I don't know if that is the most useful information from families. I think the resources and or questions, and I know the questions or the, the commonly asked questions are in the more detailed version. And so maybe it's like lifting that out and putting more information in the second version, uh, but just rethinking the design copy could be helpful. Hear you, hear you there and my, um, you know, there is no way for us to be both comprehensive and short right and, and clear of where where everyone people are coming to this i think from different entry points which is what's most challenging about trying to create a super short guide one thing there representative parker that that i have heard over and over again is that um a lot of parents don't know just because their their kids are getting A's that they're not reading. So one of the things that has come up is for this is like, if I get a Dibbles score and I see broken down by some of these words, I don't really know what that means, right? And so how do I, as a parent, try to make sense of that? They have an A in the class, but I don't find out that they're not reading at grade level until they're in fourth grade and they take NAEP is 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 kind of terrifying right so um in, in in some ways that was one of the answers that we were trying to trying to capture here but i i know that's a very different reason to come to this one pager than you know, hey what what kind of programs can i can i enroll my my my, my child in 
Yeah, just a quick follow up that that totally makes sense. Um, might it be possible to align the resources to these uh, different line items? And so if your student isn't comprehending, maybe here's a resource that you could look into or an action step to follow up. Um, again, I just I think a lot of the although it looks really nice, I just think a lot of the two pager are logos. Mm -hmm. And just wonder if there's, a, you know, I, I could be persuaded that the uh, definitions and the activities could be valuable, um, but also wondering what to do next. So, yep, great. Thank you. Representative Wattenberg. Yeah, so I, I'm a little bit of a Debbie Downer here, so I'm sorry, but let me just um, raise this. You know, I'm looking at the um, the literacy one um with the definitions all right so i go to comprehension so it says what do you do after your child has read something ask them to answer the five w's who what why when where why this is exactly the skills focused comprehension that has been pushing out the idea of background knowledge i mean i don't they're they're both necessary so i don't want to exactly pit them against each other but the whole comprehension skills thing, you know, if you look at the research, it's okay, if you get 10 lessons in it, that's what you need, it's 10 lessons. And what you really need to understand this stuff, to understand what you're reading is not people constantly asking you who, what, why, but you need to know the stuff in there so that you understand it, so that when somebody asks you who, what, why, you understand it and you can answer. So I am really worried that we're giving the wrong information here on the comprehension piece. and that concerns me a lot. I just don't think we should be doing that. And then having said that, um, I it made me start to wonder about the other activities. And I don't know, Alex, is that you? I mean, where did we get these, um, this list of activities? Is that from a particular place? Alex, uh, Mr. Shu. Um. Yeah, so Representative Weinberg, if you go into the the Google Doc version, the one that Representative Parker was referencing um, as being, you know, more robust and text heavy, there are a number of resources and activities that are linked in a chart, and so the designed version has pulled from those, you know, one or two very quick activities into the designed version does that make sense yes so in other words each of these specific recommended activities would be found in one of these other ones you just correct so it's like it was the attempt at pulling out one of i think many potential resources or activities in the interest of um accessibility if you will um and i think there is value to it but also to your point, Representative Wattenberg, it could be viewed as, I don't want to say too narrow, but too particular um, and not fully encompassing of everything out there. And by no means is it, you know, and I think Representative uh, Chang said this at the beginning of this discussion, by no means is this supposed to be a, a comprehensive document, but I think like a starting point, if you will. And, and actually, uh, Mr. Zhu, if we may add that, right, in as a note, especially that this is not at all attempting to be a comprehensive guide. And if you want a more comprehensive look, direct folks to DC's comprehensive literacy plan, right? That that 226 page document is gonna have a lot more information here. Representative Wattenberg, I think part of the framing that I had shared with Mr. Zhu and, 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 and Lauren, our policy fellow, and when they were putting this together is to align it to Aussie's comprehensive literacy plan, which I think uh, is why we are focusing on these kinds of definitions of competency um, in, in an attempt to also help make sure that we are highlighting the great work that the, the folks uh, from the Aussie team put into building this longer guide that that you know i think is 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 much much more much more in depth around these pieces and does include more of a breakdown around 
around knowledge, although I would also like to see more. Another thing we could do is, is just make sure that we cite the work of, of Natalie Wexler and, and, uh, and others in, in, this, in this piece. Well, look, I just want to say, um, and I'm now looking at the stuff in the bigger piece on reading comprehension. I think it's pretty awful. I'm just going to say I, I wouldn't want my name on recommending it. Okay. I think it should be looked at. I hear what you're saying that maybe this is what Aussie is doing, but then, you know, I think we should be saying something about that. What is it about the reading rockets guides that, right? Because those are, those are. The... I don't, well, I'm not looking at the reading rockets guides. Actually, I'm somewhat familiar with them and they are typically good. I was going to say that might be an alternative. I'm looking at some scholastic things mm -hmm. that look just terrible that, that came up when I clicked. <clears throat> um where are the reading rockets things uh for example fluency multi-sensory writing faq for families tips for teaching phonemes i mean most of the links are go to reading rockets alistair can you remind me what are <laughs> Uh, intended timeline was for this or like when we were hoping to have it rolled out the the this the sort of superficial one that we had was for our uh weekend back to school event this last weekend as a to get feedback on it yeah i i, I asked because i would offer ruth alistair maybe we could huddle offline and just add to this, what Ruth is calling out, and I appreciate the a calling out of standards, Ruth, uh, although I don't know if she used that language, uh, but as I do think it could help beef up some of this and just providing work samples, student work samples, benchmarks of like, what should your student be writing, for instance, at X grade, not so much to get a certain score on a standardized test, but to uh, align with the standards. What, when Ruth was giving her feedback, I did go back and look and the activity of just have your, give your ch child a fun topic to write about and illustrate such as, and I'm assuming that's cut off, um, that would not align to grade level expectations that students would have to write in a literacy class. And so perhaps we could in a more robust version call attention to that. Anyway, uh, I will put that out there if you all are interested and maybe we could uh, offline just add to this. Uh, I, I wouldn't say it's awful, but I do think it's a solid start that if we could anchor it more around what families might be asking and how to then take action, I think that could be helpful. So, so Representative Wattenberg, if we cut the whole resource section on the right side or just cut what is literacy at the top, if I'm hearing both of you say that's not helpful, would, would you feel more comfortable sharing that? So it's much more on, hey, here are some nonprofits that do literacy work in DC and here are some free online professional. So let me say, this. first of all, may I may somehow be looking at the wrong thing so someone can help me offline because I'm not picking up anything from Reading Rockets. I've just now found another thing that's scholastic. So I don't know what I'm doing. I'm, I'm not or, sure what you're... Yeah, are you, I don't, did you click the links that were uh, shared at 509 in the chat? Yeah. And then I clicked into them. Yeah. So I mean, the yeah. majority of the links go to Reading Rockets. I just so that's thought, weird. I don't. Maybe I'm just picking the wrong ones, and you know, there's a couple that don't. And then, but let's not take more time here. I will look. That's my concern, is that if we link to something, it should be really good. You know, it should be good. We don't want to be one more vendor out there, one more place out there giving people not good stuff. And so that absolutely and, yep um and then on the i have a little bit of the same question on the organizations i don't know enough but i want to know that we vetted these and that we feel really good about the places i i don't know enough to know but you know a lot of the people out there doing literacy work are not doing great work that's the problem so, so, I, I mean, so if I think my, my, the, the, the easy, the, okay. So there is a, we vet individually route, right? I think the route in, in a way that, that helps shape this is here's how Aussie's thinking about it. And here's, 
here's who they or DCPS have funded to come into the schools is another way to think about it. And what is already kind of gotten a stamp from DC Gov, right? So the 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 task in a way is, you know, the 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 questions that we are trying to answer here are, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is there are these resources that are available in DC. Um, when I look at this list, I can think of individuals I know at most of these great places who are experienced reading instructors, right? Which- uh, In balanced literacy and in, you know- In, in a whole letters. range of, in a whole range of work, right? And so the, 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 if if we are to vet around a very specific, have you also gotten structured literacy training and are you approved for that? I don't think this guide will come out. So the and and maybe that's not maybe we say none of the maybe maybe the call to action then representative Wattenberg that I'd love your help with is none of the nonprofits that do literacy work in DC should be operating and we should stop funding them, right? Like if that is the ask and it's hey we need to stop partnering with these private organizations because they're not doing the right work. I think that is a totally different conversation for us to be having. And that is a, that is a, that is a different call to action. I mean, look, what I would say is, um, you know, we have been the what matters, right? And in terms of our conversations with Asi, you've been very strong on the point that it matters what kind of training we do and it matters that it's a really good one and there's you know you have some sense as i think we all do of some that are very good and some that aren't and so there's a list and i feel something jumped onto that list before in terms of the providers that dcps might sorry that's my cat um that i hadn't heard before but mainly you know i feel very good about the dc reading clinic and about uh you know og and anyway the list was a good list what but i don't know that those, but those are for I, those are for instructors i no no i know and what i'm yeah. saying is i think that aussie has been pushed um constructively to have a very good list on those right i don't know that anybody pushed them in the same way on these third party providers i mean i don't know that's all i'm saying and i so would you propose actually we I mean, what I can do is just keep individually responding to folks and saying, hey, turn to the Aussie's Comprehensive Literacy Guide, good luck, right? I think what I'm trying to find is a better way to answer than that. And yes, there are ways to make this better. And yeah. my ask to you would be, what would be, what would be the way that you would respond to the reading instructors and parents who, who ask us questions about where they can turn to for more help? So, and and for, I that question I would highlight that answer, which I'm not sure this two pager actually does. And like, if you have a third grader, this is where your third grader should be. And if not, here that's are, in the comprehensive literacy plan broken down by grades. Yeah, and so that was my original feedback that maybe that again that should be the centerpiece of this resource, um, because I think that yeah. is what parents are going to be grappling with where my kid, where is my kid supposed to be? And if they are not, what questions should I be asking and or what resources can I leverage? Okay, so um, we are past time for this part of the conversation. I'm leaving this, Mr. Zhu, thinking that actually we will put a pause on this, put this on the back burner. We will not share it and we will not edit it moving forward for now. Um, and let's 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 move on to something a bit more productive then. Um, Alistair, and I'm going to talk about this offline because I I get what you're trying to ask and having an answer. I'm just I'm worried about what we're saying. Absolutely, and, and 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 I think and I think I I really appreciate Lauren for for putting this together, Mr. Zhu. Really seriously, if uh, if you can pass her our thanks for for putting putting these guides together, uh, really. And I think there there are. There are there are other things that that we need to talk through, I think, for this meeting. So let's put this one on pause. So moving on, we've got the 
social study standards. And um, since President Sutter is not on today, Mr. Zhu, would you mind giving us an update? Yes, that's not a problem at all. Um, so as you all, I hopefully hopefully heard, I know we had some audio issues with the um, public meeting on the 21st, but Dr. Grant did provide some updates related to where we're at with the social studies standards. Um, and so I just wanted to reiterate some of those and kind of some of the things that I at least noted um, that Dr. Grant shared that I think should be um, reshare. And so Dr. Grant mentioned that OSSI has hired a social studies person. Um, I believe they're going to start soon. It's my understanding that that person's name has already been shared out as well. Um, I don't recall her name off the top of my head, but um, I know that the person has been hired and the, the individual, um, I think, previously did some work with DCPS. Um, the Office of the State Superintendent of Education received some grant funding. Um, to allow them to host a convening in December, which will allow them to gather feedback on the social studies standards. Um, it's my understanding that the set of draft standards is supposed to be released um, in December, early December. There will be a period of, I think, 45 days for public comment on that. Um, that period will include the um, convening of like LEA um, standards um, or LEA social studies folks. Um, it is also my understanding that during that period of, of public comment and Representative Wattenberg, I know this is something you've raised a handful of times, is the money that OSSI has received from this foundation will also allow them to convene a group of professional um, kind of like social studies and civic um, professionals to review the standards um, for their um, um, you know, feedback like a third party advisory committee, if you will. Um, as far as the standards themselves, um, there are going to still be, I think, four traditional um, standards. So civics, economics, history, geography. And then I believe the fifth is going to be an inquiry arc um, of sorts. Um, and let's see here. Is that meant to be like critical thinking? I'm not entirely sure what okay. the specific specifics of it are gonna be, um, but I do think that it um, is is a little bit different than what are the traditional uh, bands of social studies. I think uh, it's like a critical think, thinking strand, you know, be sure to ask the following kinds of questions would be my mm -hmm. guess. Um, I know Asi has been working to update both courses and course titles. Um, another note that I think this is continuing and one that has been provided in most updates is grade eight will become an action civics course. Um, I think that does shift some of the world history stuff. Um, and it's also my understanding that I think um, Aussie's hoping to make some budget requests for um, like implementation of the standards starting in FY24. So before we move over to, to questions from, from uh, Representative Parker and Representative Wattenberg, may I just frame this, uh, Mr. Zhu, of we have, we launched this effort to revise the social study standards. And our work was to make sure that we tee it up. Aussie has taken that over, right? They are hiring someone to now as the technical expert to work on this um, and, and, and move it through. And so uh, what, just, just at the highest level, Mr. Zhu, could you tell me what is technically our role in all of this? Yeah, so technically the role of the state board will be once the standards have gone, have been out for public comment, have gone through the public comment process, they at some point will be returned to the state board and the state board is responsible for voting on the standards um, and approving them, whether or not you choose and, to. Them. And if we say no, it goes back to the original that, that we had years, years, years and years ago, is that correct? Uh, over a decade ago. 
Okay. Yes. I would just say that that yes, uh, it doesn't necessarily go back to the original. It would, in my assessment, mean that Asi would have more work to do to address whatever concerns that the board uh, flagged. And hopefully that they would do that in order to get it across the finish line. I would love you all's take, like, what do you think of the idea of doing like round tables with educators around the standards or maybe educators and parents? I think maybe more so educators to get feedback for us. Like I know ASI is doing its round of engagement and they're gonna get feedback and hopefully we'll be a part of that process. Uh, it, but do we have enough details to even yet, Mr. Zhu, to have the specifics to get feedback on, on which to get feedback? No, we do not. So, so, so just, just one, one second, uh, just to close this one out, Representative Parker, so what would the what would the round table you're proposing be? Would that be after we get those details? That's right. So okay. when they deliver the draft, I imagine they're going to release a draft standards document and they are going to do their engagement. And I think kind of like what we did on ESSA, we should probably do our own engagement to, you know, uh, highlight areas for growth, but also where they're really strong and then come back and meet in the middle. Um, I think it could be fruitful or we can ask members to host events in their wards. I know uh, President Sutter ages ago now seemingly teeth that up as an idea that members would do engagement sessions in their wards. That could also be a way to approach it if we didn't want to do it in a centralized fashion. Sorry, Representative Wattenberg, I cut you off earlier. Um, well, no, I, I just want to sort of feed a bit off what um, Zach is saying. In other words, as I understand it, the stand the draft standards are going to drop mid December. Is that is that the right date, Mr. Jew? Is that right, mid December? I don't know the exact date. Um, what what did they is, say? Just December? No, no time. December. I, I feel like it's going to be early to mid-December at the latest. All right. So here's the thing that I am concerned about. There's sort of two parts of this. Um, they're going to get released, and then there's 45 days, and then it sounds like they come back to us for a vote. So two things. First, um, they're going to be presented to us at a time when half the board is going to only be on for 15 more days, and then we're going to have to vote on them after the other half of the board has been on for about 30 days. So the board is gonna be in a very, very difficult position, period. That's number one. But number two, um, the 45 days is over the holidays. Um, and it may be that there's another whole plan on this, but to me, this feels very much like, let's get these through without having a big discussion on them. And I think that's a huge mistake. I, I certainly understand they're very nervous about these standards. They didn't want to do it until the election was over. They wanted to have a whole bunch of people going through it, all of which I am really totally for. But at a certain point, when they get to a almost good enough place, there has to be a real discussion on it, both with the, the experts that they're convening, which I'm thrilled is happening. And I think we do want some ability to see that list and make sure it, it, it's a good list. And then there needs to be some ability for the public to really grapple with it and for the new members to have time to grapple with it. So that's what I'll say. Okay, so Representative Wattenberg, since you are one of the folks who will be potentially not be voting on this, right? Would you, for the next meeting, come up with some ideas for how we could maybe help with that baton pass, at least so that the institutional knowledge gets passed down from folks who are currently on the board to folks who are joining around this particular question? I mean, I can try, but it's very hard without knowing what's going on on the Aussie side. I mean, I don't know, without understanding what they're doing and what they're gonna present, it's very hard to, I, I don't so know. So what, what would you propose as an actionable step for the problem you presented? Well, one, it would be helpful to get a, a more, get a real timeline from Aussie of what they're proposing. 
which is my understanding, as my understanding is, is that President Sutter has been asking most meetings and has not gotten a clear answer. So I just, I guess the, you know, I've been through this movie before, we all have. It, if the idea is that you're going to ask the board to vote when there's been very little time for them to understand it and no time for them to engage their communities, people aren't going to feel very good about it, I, you know. And either Aussie's just going to say we're on a timeline and they're going to say take it or leave it, which certainly they've been known to do. I think that would be very unfortunate. Or it's an opportunity to make sure the board, the new board members have a chance to talk to their uh, constituents about it and talk to some experts about it and be part of a discussion and, you know, offer amendments if that's appropriate. And then when they vote on it, vote on it at a time when they've really had a chance to study it themselves, hear from experts and hear from, from the public. I mean, otherwise. The, the, I mean, I think having, having being our president emeritus, being having been with us on the board for for the longest amount of time, I think I, I I would actually super appreciate your take on hey here are the here are the potential ways that this will move forward based on your past experience and what are our options at least at each step along the way so that we don't lose that when you when 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 your seat transitions is that something you could work on. Um, yes, I think what I would like to do is sort of sit down and be able to talk to you, maybe talk just to you and uh, Zach. Um, okay. Maybe that's what I, it's not, it doesn't lend itself so much to writing it down. I would like to talk with you guys about it. Okay. Um, I, and I just want to make sure that we are not, right, if, if, if based on the way that you're saying it, it is, this is what you expect will happen. Well, right? I'm not saying that, but I don't, I'm not Actually, it's not what I did expect to happen, frankly. And I don't know that, and I don't want to say that Aussie is trying to do that. I don't know that. I'm just saying what we have right now, it, it feels very concerning to me. I'm not saying that anyone's doing it intentionally. I'm not saying that at all. And, but I and, feel like if it I goes think my forward, question like, is, yeah, and I, I hear that, I hear that. I think my question is, given those concerns, what do we do is, is more my, my ask, right? Of, and what are those options? Um, okay, so so uh, yeah, I, for I, more time, to... you know, ask from, you know, all I can say is we've asked for a schedule, we haven't gotten it. If we don't have their schedule to comment on, we're sort of in the dark. We can ha ask for a conversation where we can put forward what we think is a good process. Yeah, that's either way. Okay, so so last last point here is around our broader process for reviewing and revising standards, um, and it's my understanding that. Uh, we will be talking about this much more once our uh, Ed Standards position is hired. But Mr. Zhu, would you would you please give an update there? Yeah, I'm happy to. So one, I just want to quickly respond to Representative Wattenberg. Um, I think all the concerns that you raised are accurate and correct. And I will let you know that they have all been raised with Aussie. Um, and we continue not to get information from them on a timeline um, and updates. And I know there's another concern that um, was not raised, but is one that I think we should all recognize is we don't know what the politics of um, our, our, our national politics will look like come after the midterms. And there is also, I think, anxiety around what could happen with federal overreach related to district policy. Um, if we wait too long. Um, on... that, start, that starts January, so that's that's already done. Correct, but I mean, I think the other question is related to the the longer that we continue to wait on this, is there more of a likelihood that it could happen? Um, but I mean, I, I will say this to, to everybody, and I know uh, President Sutter would say this if she was here, like she has been dogged with trying to get information on a timeline and trying to have this happen, you know, with this current board. She has raised that half the board will be changing come the end of this year with both the state superintendent, 
with the deputy mayor for education. And, you know, it is unfortunate that the technical writing committee in that process is not something that the state board owns. Um, I will, to your uh, question, Representative Chang, about like where we're at with the education standards stuff. Um, yes, I think our hope is to bring someone on board to help us with the standards work. Um, one, to really get at some of these things that Representative Wattenberg's raising about, we really need a process that is in place between both us and Aussie to make sure that things are happening in a timely manner um, and in a regular kind of consistency um, and cadence. Um, I will note that the application for the Ed Standards position was posted over the last two weeks. Um, it did close, I think, on Saturday. Um, the State Board received over 100 applications for the opening. Um, and right now we're in the process of identifying an individual um, that hopefully we can bring on by um, the end of October, early November for that role. Um, and so I would say that's where we're at with the, the larger ed standards kind of discussion and process. Can I say one thing on that, on the hiring, mm -hmm. which I didn't think to raise earlier and it may be too late and others may not agree, but if that person who's hired for standards could also be seen as somebody who is familiar enough with like the literacy standards and with the experts around literacy, they could be the kind of person that when we have the questions that we had earlier, like, is this really good comprehension or not? They know sort of where do you go to sort of vet what we have if we wanted, if we plan to do more around literacy, which I suspect we do. That's just noted. a thought, no just yeah. comment on it, but. Uh, thank you, Mr. Zhu. So, um, okay, uh, last thing here, next steps. When, when, is our, when is our next meeting, Mr. Zhu? Sorry about that. I know you just. <laughs> Just signed off there. Um, I think it's October 26th. Is that right? That sounds correct. I would suggest Great. that um, we may need to adjust that given um, a number of members will be at the NASB conference. Right. Um, okay. But we can think if it makes sense to adjust that to be the week before or the week after. Um, but yes, we typically meet on the 4th. Wednesday of every month. Okay. Uh, so look forward to, to continuing the conversations then. And um, uh, no, we have a few conversations that, that uh, we need to have in between as well. So thank you everybody and um, hope you have a good night.